Hey, my name's Steven, coming at you from Florida. Hello, y'all. This is Kevin, coming from Texas. My name's David. I'm coming from the heartland, Ohio. And welcome to the Brothers Born Podcast. And we're excited to talk to you. Yes, we are. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Brothers Born Podcast. We, uh, I know we said we were going to talk about whether Princess Leia is a Disney princess or not, but David couldn't be with us this week, so we're going to table that discussion for a little bit, but we are going to talk about Star Wars and some trivia. We might include some other random trivia between Kevin and I and see who can, who can do better at questions, trivia questions, specifically about Star Wars or, you know, who knows where things are going to go. So, But before we get into that, what have you been up to, man? What's what's been uh, your thing lately? Okay, well, there's a couple things. I've been in, in a class. Uh, we've been talking a lot about reproductive system and like um, labor and delivery and stuff like that. So, very interesting. Uh, yeah, and it's 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 actually really interesting. I, I think um, from that perspective, not from perspective of like a weird, creepy dude, but uh, just like. I think the reproductive system is actually interesting and then like learning more about labor and delivery and like complications and things like that, I think is a, I don't know. It's, it's just an interesting topic to me. It's a miracle of life, bro. It is a miracle it, of life. You know, what makes that even cooler? The guy, when, you know, when you're in eighth grade and you take that health class and you watch that movie, the miracle of life. Yeah. I so that movie. guess what my health teacher's name was? It just, it just was perfect for this. Huh? Mr. Love. <laughs> that is awesome. And, he is the man. He was such a cool dude. But I always thought it was funny that Mr. Love gave me the talk about the birds and the bees. <laughs> I like yeah, I like that. That's that's good. Um, <laughs> I have been watching YouTube because you, you know I, I watch a lot of YouTube videos because yeah, that's just you're, how I am. You're by yourself. If you're not studying, it's YouTube. <laughs> All by myself. Um. So lately, I've been watching on YouTube. I've been watching this guy, uh, Mark Rober. Mark Rober. Mark Rober. So he's um him and there, there's another channel I've been watching too called um the Hacksmith. Wait, and, the Hacksmith. Anyways. Before I, I want to know what that is, but right now what I'm picturing is a guy who makes weapons out of human bones. <laughs> <laughs> is is that know, what this is? No, no, no. Okay. Hacksmith. <laughs> so the Hacksmith he does um I don't know what his actual job is, but he he's got like a whole crew of people. And they do this thing where it, where they, it's called like make it real, and basically okay. they do stuff like they try to make a real life um, lightsaber, or they'll try to make. Like, oh, a real... I yeah. think you told me about this guy. He made a Buster Sword from Final Fantasy VII once, didn't he? No, but he did make a real life lightsaber. Okay, like legitimately a real lightsaber, except I mean, it doesn't quite function in the way it does in the movie. But he used like a plasma, um, like arc thing. I don't know. And he was doing uh, right now. His current their current project that they're working on is they're trying to make a full set of Mandalorian armor. Oh, that'd be cool. So they're um, you know, like pet, he made the flamethrower part of it, and then another guy made a uh, the Beskar spear, well, out of steel. But so, anyways, he just says little weird, weird things like that. He's kind of interesting. The only thing is his videos tend to be a little bit long, so I don't watch them that often. But anyways, it's frustrating other guy. when you find a cool YouTuber and you're like, this is really interesting, but it's like an hour long video. Oh well, I just don't. So yeah, I, I have I no, exactly. that a lot. Uh, well, because was it our last episode, or maybe it was one another one ago where I was talking about um, Chris Turner? I did the, look uh, him up. Yeah, he's yeah. funny. Well, him and his wife do a video, a podcast video where she doesn't read the news and he like tries. She gets her news from him, and it's oh, kind cool. of funny. Except they're they're his video. Those videos tend to be like over an hour long, <sighs> and it's kind of like I don't really got time for that. Yeah, but anyway, um. Mark Rober is a, he's an engineer of some sort and he just does these really goofy things. Um, one of his big ones, he, uh, he, he made like these pack fake packages that he put on his doorstep. So when people come and like steal a package from his doorstep, mm -hmm. they would open it up and then like, they would get bombed by a bunch of glitter. Oh yeah. I've seen stuff like that before. Yeah. And then like, he would have like this foul smelling spray. Yeah. That's funny he, stuff. He, and he has a camera in there. So he records the whole thing. So he did that one. He did one where he uh, he was trying to 
feed birds in the backyard with a bird feeder. Yeah. And noticed that the squirrels kept eating his bird feed. So he turned it into a squirrel obstacle course, <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> which awesome. was, which is pretty fantastic to watch. He just does all these. He's a really cool dude. My, my main thing, I started watching Falcon and the Winter Soldier this past weekend. That was pretty enjoyable. I, I like it. It's a lot different than WandaVision. It's a very uh, different Marvel thing, but still good. It's kind of like a buddy cop sort of thing. It's kind of the vibe I'm going to get from it. But it's it's interesting and uh, really cool on Disney+. Plus. They have this thing called Marvel Legends. Now, it doesn't matter for you as much because you just watched all these movies, but they're like these little character summaries and they're like, four to seven minutes long and it shows you all the like some critical scenes from these characters and they make one for like they made one for wanda and one for vision and now they made one for falcon and for the winter soldier and zemo and sharon carter so they kind of make them and those have been kind of cool because i I haven't watched those the movies in a while so it kind of refreshes but it's 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 definitely worth checking out and i know you you like that stuff so definitely watch it when you get the chance yeah no i'll probably i'll probably watch sometime this week i enjoyed it it's i think it's I kind of like that they're using the TV medium to do this because these are interesting characters and I don't know that you could flesh them out in quite the same way with a movie. I think it's going to be a good a good thing for these characters that weren't necessarily my favorite characters, but now I'll get to know them a little better. They might be they might become more of my favorite characters. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I've been doing you. that. That's been my main thing this past weekend anyway. Then also, I got a new office chair that I built yesterday and I'm pretty jazzed about it. It's a Treswell. <laughs> Wow, that's uh, you know, do you ever think when we were when we were kids? I mean, you're a little bit younger than I am, but do you ever think when we were kids, like we would be at a point in our lives where we get excited about new office chairs? I do a lot. I find myself as an adult doing a lot of things, whereas a younger person, I was like, what? Why would I even? Why would I be excited about that? Well, another one more thing. I haven't tried it yet, but uh, Stephanie and I bought Ring Fit Adventures yesterday. Have you heard of this yeah. game? Um, I've heard of it. I haven't played it. It's a like an exercise game, but it's like a platform action adventure game as well. So unlike Wii Fit, where you know you're exercising, at least this one has the added incentive to give you a storyline to go along with it. So I was going to try it yesterday, but we just ate Chipotle right before we bought it. And I'm like, that's going to end badly if I go and run around after eating Chipotle. So... <laughs> So, you know, my, you know, so, you know, my birthday was a little while ago. Yes. I, you know, most people when they're like getting up there towards their forties, not 40 yet, 39, think of birthday presents they would get and you know, I don't know, like the golf clubs or something. I'm sitting here and I, I got GI Joe figures. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> so, so I got two GI Joe figures. Cause you know, they have those six inch, those like classic, the, the new ones are like GI Joe yeah. classics, whatever, yeah. like six inches. So I, I had, um, I got core commander and I got, um, Firefly. Oh, cool! Firefly. So we went to the flea market. We went to like a flea market shortly after that. Um, just walking around doing well, whatever, finding different things. I found the most fantastic, most the most Texan thing ever. By the way, it was this grill, but it was like a sculpture of a bull, and the grill was inside the bull. That's awesome. <laughs> so, but I was so sitting there, and I found snake eyes. Oh, cool. In the grill? Was, was he hiding in there? No, no, no. Not, not in the oh, grill. Okay. Just, just at the swing market. <laughs> so I found Snake Eyes in new, you know, full, new package and everything like that. Hadn't like, been opened. Which, which Snake Eyes? The, the new ones. The, oh, the, really? Ones. Oh, yeah, wow. That's the, a big six deal. Six-inch ones. That's a rare so, thing. And it was like probably about $10 cheaper than you'll find it like online or whatever. So I picked that up. So now, I've been, so now I'm getting G.I. Joe figures again. And I'm <laughs> stoked about it. That's awesome. I went to the GameStop yesterday when I bought Ring Fit and they had the G.I. Joe Switch game there and I asked the dude working there I'm like, hey, uh, have you tried that? Well, have you heard anything about it? And he said, it's not very good. <laughs> he said, <it's, laughs> it, the gameplay looked cool. He's like, I thought I was excited because you could be a Storm Shadow in it but it's just it's not that fun. That's <laughs> what he told me. I'm like, oh, I was so disappointed to hear that because I was hoping it'd be really Yeah. Cool. yeah it's, it stinks for G.I. Joe because she was so dope but the problem is, like, it just doesn't get high quality stuff anymore. Yeah. Like, as far as like media is concerned, you know, like yeah. the cartoons, you know, like Transformers, there's a new Transformers cartoon coming out every month, it seems like. Yeah. Or a new but movie. Like, yeah. You know, and, and I still like Transformers. Don't get me wrong. I'm down with that. But like, G.I. Joe just doesn't get the love, man. Same and when with something, you- And when something new does come out, it usually ends up being disappointing. 
Masters of the Universe, I think, is a similar. I haven't really done much with that one, but... Yeah. Well, shall we move on to our trivia challenge? Yeah, let's do it. So I found this trivia quiz on ohmy.disney.com. So thank you, ohmy.disney.com. Um, this one actually gives you a score. So we're going to both take it, and we can kind of see how we do at the end. So the first question, and let me know when you have your answer before you answer that way. I don't, okay. my answer is not, you know. The most legendary ship in the galaxy, the Millennium Falcon, can comfortably fit how many people in the cockpit? A, four, B, three, C, six, or D, eight? Okay. I got my answer. You got yours? Yeah. All right, cool. Question number two. Hold on. Let me, let me I got to find something to write my answers down on. Okay. Because, um, yeah, I, don't, I, I came unprepared. That's what happened. All Actually, right. I, already, I already put my answer in. So what was your answer? Four. Four, okay. Admiral Radis and Admiral Akbar both hail from which planet? Um, oh, I think oh I'm sorry. A, A, Moncala. B, Gadalinta. C, Ryloth. Or D, Coruscant. Uh, my answer is A, Moncala. Okay. R2-D2 is classified as what type of droid? A, protocol droid. B, battle droid. C, labor droid. D, astromech droid. Astromech. The sad thing is, so far, I've known these before you even got through all the options. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't that hard. <laughs> How much total does Obi-Wan Kenobi agree to pay Han Solo for safe passage to Alderaan? A, 10,000 credits. B, 2,000 credits. C, 17,000 credits. Or D, 23,000 credits. You know what? I actually don't know this one. Um, I want to say... T- 23,000. Okay. But I feel like that's wrong. So, speaking of credits, we were talking about the Death Star last last episode. Yeah, which we, we, credits? We never we still haven't gotten a consensus on how many credits to the dollar or vice versa. <laughs> no, we didn't. I don't know how that's See, it's hard because it's a fictional monetary value. Yeah. So, you can't really actually compare it to anything. Sure. I, uh, but I'm assuming the Empire is like the wealthiest organization in the universe. Probably. Or at least in yeah. that galaxy. Yeah, in that galaxy. They, and, don't have, they don't have Tesla over there. Yeah. So. It, well, I'm just saying, in the United States, is not the wealthiest nation in our world. So no. my guess is that a Republic credit is actually like has greater value than like a U.S. dollar. Interesting. I wonder if I had some Republic credits or... Actually, you had said it's not Republic credits. Yeah, it'd be Imperial credits. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if I had some of those bad boys, and I brought them to the, like down here, and I like tried buying something with them, like, hey, let me buy this uh, this hot dog or lunch with it or something. I wonder if they they probably wouldn't well, I recognize know is, it, but well, because you know, like in the um, in the Mandalorian, they indicate that Bursker is like extremely valuable, right? Yeah, like you know, if you find the a, Beskar, like, yeah, Beskar. If you find like a good amount of Beskar, then like you're you know, you're, you're strike rich. So what if you had like a secure best car here on earth, like own what you'd get for it. Yeah, dude. Especially certain, you know, we're under an assumption. Nobody knows on earth does what best car actually is. So like we just hand them this thing of metal. People are like, Oh, cool. I don't know why you're giving this to me. <laughs> <laughs> would you, if you had best car, would you like keep it? Would you melt it down into some sweet dope armor or would you just like kind of keep it? It would depend on how much best car I had. Um, I'm at first not, he only makes that shoulder part. Oh well, yeah, because you know there's this it's difficult to make things out of Beskar, you know. And I'm not a Mandalorian blacksmith, but I think what I would do, well, I'm not a Jedi either, but if I was were, um I would make a lightsaber where the hilt was made of Beskar. That would be pretty sweet. Because that then because then no other lightsaber can defeat it. That's true. I don't think the dark saber was made of Beskar. That's a weird looking lightsaber. But the dark saber is cool though. All right. Well, next question. This one I definitely don't know, but maybe you do. Which handmaiden of Queen Padme Amidala served as decoy for the queen? A. Help me out. I might be saying these wrong. Erte. B. Sabe. C. Rebe. Or D. Sache. I want to say it's either B or C. 
Um, Sebi or Rebbe? No, sorry, B or D. Sache. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say B. Sebi? Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say B. All right. Um, funny story about that one. I I have this thing where I always get Natalie Portman and Kira Knightley mixed up all the time. Really? <laughs> they, like, to weird. me, they look kind of similar. But interestingly, Kira Knightley played one of the decoys in that movie. And, I, and like now, whenever I if I like I like both those actresses are cool. But I uh, I see a movie with one of them in it, and I have to like think about which one it is. I'm like, was that Kira Knightley or Natalie Portman? <laughs> You, you know who I'd kind of do that with? Not now because one, I don't, one doesn't even act anymore. I don't think, but when you go like back in the nineties is Brad Pitt and, um, what's his name? Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer. Yeah. 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 They, they, they look similar that. too. I digress. While serving as a stormtrooper, Finn was known as a FN two one eight seven B FN two one nine nine C FN two thousand or D F N two thousand three. I should have said two zero zero three, but you get the idea. <laughs> a. Yes, I think that's what it is as well. Almost there. Got a couple more. Poe Dameron was raised on which planet? A. Alderaan. B. Tatooine. D. Dantooine. Or I don't know what. D. I may have said D twice. Alderaan, Tatooine, Dantooine, or Yavin four. Ooh, uh, it's not Yavin Four, not Alderaan. Uh, I want to say Dantooine. Dantooine. I might be wrong. I'm not that familiar with Poe Dameron. Approximately how many forms of communication does C-3PO know? More than one hundred thousand, more than seven million, more than three million, or more than five hundred thousand? Three million. Oh no, seven million. Which crime is not found on Jin Erso's rap sheet? A, forging imperial documents. B, shipjacking. C, petty theft. D, impersonating a stormtrooper. I have no idea. I'm shipjacking guessing. is going to be what I'm going with. You I, know forging de- I know she did forge doc- documents. I distinctly remember that one. I don't know. We, we were both wrong on that one. <laughs> yeah. Trade Federation leader Newt Gunray is assisted by a droid named A, TC-11, B, TC-14, C, TC-13, or D, TC-17. Dude, I don't even freaking know. Um, Newt Gunray. Do you even know who he is? I don't yeah, I, yeah, I know. Who Newt, I know who that is. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to randomly pick one C. All right, let's see. What, what was C? C was TC-13. We were both wrong. <laughs> I don't know what it is. You don't know who Newt Gunray is? No, I, 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 I see his face. I'm like, oh, yeah, I know that guy. But I don't. I couldn't tell you anything about him, no. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you anything about, much about him either. Grigrin Dan, leader of the Cantina Band, Modal Nodes, plays what instrument? I have no idea. <laughs> the clue horn, <laughs> the fanfare, the omni omnibox, or the double jossamer. This is awesome. <laughs> I, I like I like the double jossamer. It just sounds cool, so that's what I'm going go with. I went for clue horn, and I was right. <laughs> <laughs> <Were you? laughs> yeah dude i, I want to get a clue horn I, you think david could play a clue horn i bet he could if we got him one you, you know you know what they call them um, like the bands that play it like cantinas what's that jizz whalers jizz <laughs> they're called no they were there that's what they're called jizz whalers interesting that one had a different name for, uh i already left it now but uh, is it that the dude the dudes with the funny looking alien yeah yeah all right <laughs> At the end of episode seven, Ray finds Luke Skywalker and says, what? A, I need your help. B, I found you. C, may the force be with you. Or D, she doesn't say anything. She doesn't say anything. Oh, that reminds me. I got to tell you about this. There's a bunch of videos. They're like basically Star Wars memes, but it's um, General Grievous. Oh, yeah. Collecting lightsabers. Because, <laughs> you know, I like in the movie, when he's like, during a fight over one, he's like, oh, you're right. So we're a great addition to my collection. Yeah. So somebody took that line and they just have like like random moments in stars where he's taking lightsabers. So like when um Luke throws it over his shoulder and if say they have him pop out, he's like, This will make a great addition to my collection. And then like there's um it's like every scene where a lightsaber is dropped or like thrown or whatever, like they have him come out and be like, This will make a great lightsaber to my collection. That's awesome. <laughs> it's hilarious. You get you have to look them I'll up. I looked that up. So I got six correct, you got seven correct. So you got one more than me. 
Sweet. All I'm right. actually kind of proud of myself. Of course, I guessed in the clue horn, but uh, yeah. <laughs> but still, that's not bad. It's, it, it, we're not we, we're not a hundred percent. So <laughs> I don't See, know if we should. I never thought I was, and people are convinced. Like my, you know, my wife, David, you're convinced I'm like this huge Star Wars nerd. I'm really not. In comparison, though. In to comparison, to, comparison to the rest of the family, yeah, I probably am the most <laughs> knowledgeable. But like overall, I'm really not. Though. So, I bet mom knows more than any of us about Star Trek. But Steph- Stephanie actually likes Star Trek too. She was watching Voyager recently. It's all right. You know, the problem with Star Trek is um, they kind of, I guess you could make the same argument as Star Wars, but they kind of went just went crazy go nuts when it comes to um, how many like Star Trek series there are. Yeah, Star Wars is right behind them though. Let's be real. Yeah, but, but the thing is like, so, Inter- so Enterprise, I've never watched Enterprise, but like you have Enterprise, which is supposed to be like before the original series, I think. Yeah, cracks me up because the tech and like the animation and stuff, or not animation, but CGI is so much more advanced now than it was. It, the only ones I'm familiar with, the only ones I'm really familiar with are the original series, Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager. I didn't. Voyager was okay. I liked um, it. I I didn't like the majority of the. Characters. I think I had a crush on the Borg girl, though. To be honest with you. Well, who really didn't? Like, but like. <laughs> I think what it was, I didn't like any of the characters on Voyager. But okay. I don't know. I I can't get into Star Trek really all that much. I mean, mm-hmm. I'll watch it, but I can't really get into it. Though I do think that if you put Captain Picard with the original star- series, that would be like the ideal star- star Trek series. You mentioned General Grievous earlier. What is the name of his flagship, which was not mentioned in the movie? His flagship? Yeah. Oh, uh, I do know this one. Um <laughs> I can't remember the whole. It was something hand. Oh my goodness! You know this? Yeah, I told you. I know this. I can't think. What the... <laughs> I didn't even know you had his own ship. Yeah. Oh, jeez, I can't remember what the full name of it was. It's it's like a two part two word name. The, the invisible hand. hand. Yeah, yeah, there, invisible hand. Yeah, I did know that. What's the name of the Wookiee's home world? Kashyyyk. Oh my goodness! All right, these some of these are too easy. Um, what species stole the plans to the Death Star? Hold on. Bothans. Okay, explain that to me. Bothans? I thought it was like Jyn Erso in them. No, no. Well, she stole a... I don't know, because there's kind of like some weird mix there. Um, I think she's not the only one that they got plans from. I think they like accumulated plans from multiple sources. Okay. Um, but I don't know. But the Bothans... Because you remember... Uh, what's her name? Mon Mon Martha or whatever Martha Mon- Martha or whatever her name is the lady with the short hair where she's like you know I'm thinking I'm, I'm thinking might be thinking of Return of the Jedi but when she's like talking about the Death Star plans she's like many Bothan spies have died getting this information oh yeah and she right. like looks off into space like it's this terrible thing and you're sitting there like I'm sure that's terrible but I don't know I have any idea what a Bothan is so I don't really care <laughs> I do know what a Bothan is they're kind of weird looking they look kind of like mice I don't know but anyway <laughs> what I might be wrong. What is the nickname of the Wookiee bounty hunter Snuva? Oh, that I don't know. Mad Claw. I don't even know who that character is. But how old is Yoda when he dies? Um, didn't he say he was like over nine hundred or something? Yeah. Oh, this one I surprised me. Who kissed Princess Leia first? Luke. It's actually Han, apparently. No. I mean, it is not. Uh, well, actually, you know what? You're right because Luke didn't kiss, never actually kissed Leia. She Leia kissed, kissed Luke. Oh man, there we go. Huh? Listen to this. Oh, one. never mind. I was wrong. Bothans don't look like mice. They look like weird yak people. Weird what? <laughs> yak people. <laughs> yak people. I don't know. I don't care about Bothans. Whatever. <laughs> Bothans are jerks. Yeah, Bothans are jerks. That's what I'm going to name this. Uh, <laughs> Bothans are jerks. <laughs> that, they're like, oh man, I don't remember. I, I've not read books and stuff where they're like super. Now I got to look these dudes up, man. Bothans? <laughs> yeah. Do you think they talk with a Boston accent? Like, do you think like their accent's kind of like our equivalent of a Boston? Uh, he's he's a Bothan. He's like, they say car and whatever else. <laughs> I don't think so, no. Oh, okay. They look kind of like, do you remember in Final Fantasy X, Kimari, that blue dude? Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember him. They kind of look like that, or like a mix between him and Splinter. <laughs> so they have a, little bit of, they have a little bit of a mouse thing going on there, but look kind of lion, lion-like lion as well. 
Interesting. Yeah, like if you crossed like Splinter with like Scar from Lion King or something. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of weird, like uh, you know, match like if you were crossing things. So I want you to look up pictures of Abraham Lincoln. Okay. And I want you to look up pictures of Teddy Roosevelt. All right. All right, doing it. So if the two of them ever had a child, not that that's even possible, but if they did, <laughs> Mr. Peanut. All right, all right, hold on. Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> okay. Okay. And I Teddy Roosevelt. It. Teddy Roosevelt. And, and then look up then look up images of Mr. Peanut. You'll see what you'll see what I'm talking about. There's definitely a resemblance. All right. Teddy Roosevelt in my head. I let me engrave it in my memory. Okay, here we go. Mr. Peanut. You're right. Here's the question, though. <laughs> you think when Mr. Peanut was born, he was born with a monocle and a hat and a cane? I feel like he was. <laughs> yeah, he probably was. Like, I don't know how, who birthed here? Was it Teddy Roosevelt or <laughs> I don't, Abraham I don't know. Lincoln? I'm not sure, but he's whoever it was. Mr. And it's cool because, you know, Abraham Lincoln and Teddy Roosevelt are easily our two greatest presidents of all time. And, um, <laughs> you know, Mr. Peanut's cool. He sells you peanuts. So, I, yeah, I like to think he was. Uh, <laughs> He was born with the hat on, for sure. I almost wonder if Abraham Lincoln was born with the hat on. He, he actually he doesn't, he really doesn't have a lot of photos of him with the hat on, though. <laughs> I like I like the story of how Abraham Lincoln ended up growing a beard. What, what was it for? Did you have like a funky so, looking face or something? No. Well, some girl told him that he would look more handsome. Basically, some little girl told him he would look more handsome with a beard, so he grew one. Interesting. Yeah. He's also um, Abraham Lincoln's also um, responsible for uh, Thanksgiving being a uh, holiday. Oh, yeah, we talked about that a few months ago there. Yeah. Thanksgiving episode. If y'all haven't listened to it yet, go check it out. Even yeah. though it's not Thanksgiving anymore. Also, also, all of you who um, are listening to this, look up pictures of Abraham Lincoln and Teddy Roosevelt and try to convince yourself that Mr. Peanut is not their love child. <laughs> <laughs> Help me out with my history here. Were they even alive at the same time? Probably not. Um, I don't know. I, I, if they were, when was, when was Theodore Roosevelt born? Theodore Roosevelt. Yeah, dude, he's, he's on the same yeah. birthday as me. 1858. Yeah, they would have been alive at the same time. Teddy wait. Roosevelt and I have the same birthday. That's wait, wait, awesome. no. When, okay, when, 1858. So when did Abraham Lincoln get killed? 1865. Dude. See, there you go. possible. I think we made a crazy discovery here. <laughs> I think we made a crazy discovery. Well, you know, Abraham Lincoln's a vampire, so that's maybe, true. He, he there's, lived, there's he no lived reason for to long assume time. it. There's no reason to assume that Theodore Roosevelt wasn't a vampire as well. Yeah, or even if he wasn't. I mean, the fact that Abraham Lincoln, even though he was assassinated or whatever by Booth, he's a vampire, so he like survived. We know that, and uh, <laughs> he maybe they they'd be like Teddy Roosevelt was like, hey, I need some help with my presidency. And only like you know the the box the president has that has all the secret information that yeah. has that that is the only yeah, like he, he knew about Abraham sure. Lincoln being alive still because that's in the box that information is like all the other weapons yeah, of mass destruction yeah, it, dude, is, it is in the box like all the other stuff that's in that box irrelevant compared to Abraham Lincoln still being alive as a vampire hunter. And things I think you're right because if you so you you've read Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter right yeah you've read I the just book. got mom to read so it by the way. <laughs> did you yeah <laughs> dude i love that book it's great but there's a second book um, oh really i did not yeah there's a second one where it's about the uh the guy that the vampire that abraham lincoln like gets trained under and it's like his life story and it starts he he started off as one of the uh the um colonists of roanoke oh interesting and then it like goes on he's and the dude's been alive forever like it goes through like his time of abraham lincoln and it goes through like when he was um like years later, he he was responsible for um him, him and so him and Tesla uh, were it came up with a plot to kill Rasputin. Oh really? In yeah. The, so yeah, so the, it's, it's really okay, gotcha. Yeah, in the book, I can't think of the name of the book. It's really interesting though, and they kind of go more into that into like into it. I th- think they did mention that that the you know, U.S. presidents are all aware that Abraham Lincoln is a vampire hunter. Is yeah, dude. Vampire, yeah. That's the big secret that like <laughs> passes on from president to president. We're lucky that the, our former president just uh, didn't leak it <laughs> on Twitter or something like that. <laughs> but he's on Twitter. He's like, "So Abraham Lincoln is still alive, and I think it's great." <laughs> like, 
<laughs> Dude. <laughs> But yeah, man. So him and Teddy, him and Teddy, they had a they had a, a peanut child. You know, how people refer to their baby as their little peanut. People say that all the time when they announce a pregnancy. Yeah, exactly. like, it's my little peanut. Oh yeah, they definitely <laughs> meant it when they had that one. <laughs> oh, my little peanut. Oh, it's my little peanut. And then there, <laughs> it really Mr. was peanut, peanut. arrives. Whoa, wait, it really is a peanut. With Not a sure how the birthing process worked though. You know, sci- <laughs> science is you know science is crazy. All kinds of things can happen, <laughs> especially when <laughs> vampires are involved. Yes. Yes. No, Joe, no, Theodore Roosevelt was dope, man. He's the coolest president ever. He's got a sweet monocle. He's got a sweet. Does he wear a monocle? He's got sweet glasses. Oh, no, cool no, glasses. glasses. So, uh, a good, a great example of why Theodore Roosevelt was so amazing is um, Yellowstone. He, isn't that him? Isn't that his? Yeah, sponsor? yeah. That, yeah, all our national parks are because of him. But he was at, um, he was giving, it was an inauguration speech? I don't know. He was giving a speech and someone attempted to assassinate them, assassinate him. So he got shot. Right. Oh, really? While giving the speech. This is Theodore Rosa. So he gets shot giving a speech. And his response is, ladies and gentlemen, I've peer, it appears I've been shot. And then he <laughs> continues with the speech and finishes it. <laughs> like, he doesn't even care. He's like, hey, I've been, I've been shot. Anyway, <laughs> that's why huh. he's the coolest president of all time. It's pretty noble of him, you know. Just keep talking even when you're bleeding. <laughs> like, <laughs> like bleeding out. I was like, anyway, presidency, <laughs> yeah. national parks, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> And then, like, Mr. Peanut is just, like, hanging out, like, inside his coat or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> just hanging out in there. All right, man. Well, this has been fun. I've enjoyed this. Thanks for listening, everybody. Hope you enjoyed our little trivia sesh, our little Mr. Peanut commentary. <laughs> Catch you next time. All right. Hey, thanks for listening to the Brothers Born Podcast, minus David today. We missed him, but Kevin and I still had some fun spitting out some Star Wars trivia, talking about Mr. Peanut and Abraham Lincoln. Things got a little crazy there. Hope you enjoyed it. want to take a moment and thank Lyman Girona for his image of C-3PO that we borrowed for the episode art this week. You can find that image on Unsplash.com or the Unsplash app. We probably got a little bit more Star Wars coming at you, at least for the next episode, if not longer. If you have any comments about Star Wars, email us at brothersbornpodcast at gmail.com or check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash brothersbornpodcast. Looking forward to talking to you next time. See you later. <laughs>